Hustlers is proudly brought to you by Namdep Diamond Corporation. Good today, better tomorrow. 99 FM, your inspiration station. It's half past seven o'clock and you're still listening to the ignition on your inspiration station. It's another day, another day for Royal Hustler with an amazing story. And this morning we're joined in studio by R&B Namibia CEO, Mr. Philip Chapman, who recently took on his new role as R&B Namibia CEO after previously heading up the R&B corporate credit department in Namibia and also playing an equally vital role as R&B regional credit co-head. He has vast bank- banking experience, which spans almost two decades having worked in corporate banking roles in South Africa and Namibia and also most recently heading F&B commercial and business banking. One of the tasks he took on in his new role is to help R&B steer through the post-pandemic era towards a better business and better Namibia. So again, I am so privileged to be sitting here on the Ignition this morning to get to chat to him and to hear his story. So good morning to you, Mr. Chapman. Can I call you, Philip? Good morning, and good morning to all the listeners as well. Yeah. Uh, please go ahead and call me Philip. Awesome. Good Thanks. morning, Philip, and thank you for joining us here at 99FM. It's great to be here. Let's start from the very beginning. Mr. Uh, Philip, as a kid, how were you? What kind of kid were you as a kid? I think I was quite adventurous. I was fortunate enough to have grown up on a farm. Yeah. So from my early childhood, I had quite a bit of freedom to kind of do what I found to do and what I loved. Um, I went to boarding school um, and that, I guess, created a little bit more structure and discipline in life. Yeah. And that, that again, helped me to call it form a few uh, basic uh, or call it fundamental principles in life as to how one needs to almost pursue goals and how one needs to pursue, call it opportunities yeah, yeah. In, a, in, a, in a very dedicated way uh, and sometimes go at it uh, a little bit more in a structured way than just kind of randomly. Yeah. What was your biggest dream growing up? Like, I'm, I'm sure there were probably a lot of dreams, being a doctor, whatever the case might have been, but what was your biggest dream growing up? I probably had three big dreams. Okay. The biggest one was to be a pilot. The other two were to be a sports star. Okay. And to have my own business. <laughs> yeah. So over the past few years, I've managed to at least fulfill one of them. Yeah. And that was to become a pilot back in 2011. Okay. I played sports um, quite extensively up to university level, but unfortunately I never managed to, to become that sports star that I hoped to be. Yeah. And uh, I guess today running the R&B business is also fulfilling another dream mm. of having a business because yeah. in R&B it's honestly that you're an, an owner of the business and it's almost like it's your own business. Yeah. So, so I guess I've gotten two out of three. Well, yeah, two out of three, and that's good. That's, that, that's a good number. <laughs> and did you, did you have a side hustle growing up? I had many. Yeah. Some of them were very successful and some were very unsuccessful. Okay. I started out selling goldfish to the kids at school hmm. that I caught in my mum's um, fish pond. Um, <laughs> they didn't last very long because then all the fish were sold. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I tried quite a few and uh, even today I still have a small farming uh, business which I run on the side and which gives me great pleasure. Uh, every now and again to head out and just kind of spend a bit of time in the felt and mm. spend a bit of time um, in nature. Yeah. So yeah, I I guess it's great to have a bit of a, a side hustle just to kind of keep you excited about yeah. what can be. Yeah, I like that. Over the years, uh, Philip, I'm sure, you know, the, the idea or the definition for success has changed. How has your idea or um, definition of success changed over the course of your life? I guess when you're a youngster and you're starting out in your career, often one of the driving factors is call it to make money or to call it try to be more affluent than you are at the time. And, and I guess also when I started my career, pursuing financial freedom was, was a key point in, in how I looked at success. As I became more mature and I understood that life is about more than just the making money, yeah. I think one kind of realized that it's probably finding a balance in life between doing what you love, between achieving financial freedom, but at the same time, spend time with your, your family, spend yeah. time on stuff that you love, um, as opposed to only pursuing a single, call it dream or goal. And, and I guess for everybody, success is defined slightly differently. Yeah, yeah. Everyone would have his own view of success. But, but for me, the key is in finding the balance between 
all the different facets in life because ultimately we need to remain healthy we need to remain strong we yeah. need to be able to deliver on our goals and i think all of that takes a different dimension if you think about it uh, more holistically as opposed to single-minded yeah yeah um also your daily routines um or activities that you do on a daily basis that that's got that that's gotten you where you are today what are those what are they They've also evolved over time. Yeah. I guess uh, when I was a youngster, I used to exercise every day. Uh, and uh, now that I'm a little bit older, I don't exercise every day anymore. <laughs> um, but I think it's key to remain on top of what is happening locally, locally regionally, and also internationally. Yeah. So I do spend a bit of time every day staying abreast of what is happening in call it the financial world, uh, looking at where opportunities may arise, also looking at where, where risks to our business may arise so, so I think that that's a key key part of being a bit more knowledgeable as to mm. what is happening and then I guess from a personal level it's about finding those two or three things that also give you energy yeah so spend a bit of time on it if it's not every day maybe once a week twice a week just make sure that you remain energized and that you you really call it strong and able to pursue your opportunities to the best extent uh, possible. Yeah. Since we're still on the topic of, of daily routine, I, I want to know what your mornings look like. Are you a morning person? What's your morning routine for when you get up in the morning before you go to work? So I have two moon, morning routines. Okay. The one that I aspire to and the one that I sometimes end up in. <laughs> I aspire to get up at five in the morning. Yeah. And then I normally do emails or work between five and six. So by the time... I, I get to work, I'm ready for the day. I don't have many emails um, creating a backlog in my yeah. day. I've dealt with whatever I had to do, so I'm able to focus on what lies ahead for, for the day. Yeah. I guess between six and eight, I spend a bit of time having a proper breakfast, and then I make sure that the kids are dropped to school Yeah. before I then head back to work. And I normally get, get to work just after 7.30, okay. and then the day starts. But, but hugely important that if you can get to work and you're focused and ready for the day, it just puts you on the front yeah. to deliver. Yeah, uh, to and the be productive as much as you can be. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the mornings is probably your most productive time. So that's why the morning between kind of getting up at five and, and getting to lunch is, is the time that you need to make it count. Yeah, yeah. And also, Mr. Uh, Philip, how would you uh, define effective leadership in your opinion? Leadership, in my opinion, is about enabling and empowering people to be the best version of themselves. And for me, that is critical in how I lead the teams. Yeah. Is everybody has a certain set of skills. Um, there are people that is highly skilled in different fields, which I can never be. So for me, it's really about enabling and empowering them to step to the fore, to be the leader in their own, call it in their own, own sphere, but also in the bigger organization. And then I guess it's about call it positioning and leading the the team through the strategy that, that we as a business have agreed on. And, and I think the third bit is, is to be inspirational. Mm. It is a, it's important to inspire people um, that we pull together and that, <clears throat> and that we create um, what I would call uh, a cohesive team yeah. in, in delivering on our strategic objectives. Yeah. That brings me to my, to my next question. What do you challenge Namibians to do to ensure a better future for themselves in their communities, uh, taking up leadership positions in their communities to make a difference? What would you challenge Namibians to do in that regard? I think as Namibians, we have many opportunities. I think we, we have a country that brings, call it, opportunities in different fields. And it starts with you being able to go to school, get free education, so I think from the get-go, make it count. Yeah. Do the best that you can in school. Get good grades. Upskill yourself to ultimately play a bigger role in the Namibian economy. And, and I guess to, to the leaders and to the organizations and the people of Namibia, I think we need to start to think about more than just ourselves. Yeah. Let's think about our communities. Let's think about our ecosystems. Let's think about our children about the future of Namibia and, and let's do more than just what you do for yourself. Mm. I think that's critical. If we can get to the point that we all start to play 
a role where we're trying to create a better Namibia yeah. for all, as opposed to only looking after what I can achieve, I think we are going to be in a great place in this country. Yeah, I love that. And and you, an R&B specific role in the Namibia, in the Namibian market, uh, what is it? And what do you think you will add to achieving uh, the organizational goals of R&B? So, I guess on the on the face of it, R&B is a corporate and investment bank, which provide call it banking services and the related products. I ever think the the bigger opportunity lies in the fact that RMB can create and enable a more sustainable long-term Namibia. Yeah. And that is through partnering with our clients, that is through partnering with government, it is through, call it, making our people and their skills available and, call it, useful in the bigger economy. So, so it's really about creating a sustainable Namibia, which is also creating a long-term sustainable future for a business like R&B. Yeah. So I guess that's uh, the philosophical part, but also what we what we do on a daily basis on the ground. Yeah. Um, you stepped into this new role now, Philip. What was your first mandate upon taking up the role of R&B Namibia CEO? And what do you see? How do you see it being in the next 12 months? Where do you see it being in the next 12 months? So I guess the R&B business has been extremely successful. Um, the, the business have grown tremendously over the past four years and I guess the key role for me is to continue that growth trajectory it's to make sure that the foundation and the work that has been the foundation that's been laid and the work that has been done um, call, a, call it continues and that we, 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 we build on that to deliver more and more efficiently into the future in terms of my own role as you've stated in the beginning We've looked at the past 12 months, we've seen the pandemic hitting us. I think it's important that in the next 12 months we, we navigate yeah. the, the challenges that may still come or which may remain given the pandemic. And then as things stabilize, we can then again accelerate the growth trajectory of the business. And, and I think the second bit is to also look at, at how do we diversify our business. I guess what we've seen is there are many different pressures and many different call it challenges that, that one sees and it's about how do you navigate that to create sustainability in your business yeah. and that will be a key focus for me over the next 12 months. Amazing. Philip, uh, we've actually come to the end of the interview and I, I have one last question for you and this question is about the future of Namibia. Are you hopeful for the future of our country? I must say I'm extremely hopeful. I think Namibia and Namibians have have got a great opportunity. We are a fairly small economy and unfortunately therefore we are impacted significantly by what happens in terms of global events. Yeah. But at the same time, because we're small, a small positive change can also set us on a great trajectory for growth again. And, and that's why I really remain, remain hopeful. I think we've got resilient people in mm -hmm. Namibia, we've got strong leadership, we've got big corporates that can contribute and we've got small businesses that can play their part. I guess there's so many initiatives in the economy that, that's currently, um, call it ongoing, to, to ultimately enable a, a better Namibia. So I am I'm hugely excited. Yeah. I am a Namibian, I'm from Namibia, and I'm here for Namibia. Mm. And therefore, I really have hope for this country, for all our people, and uh, to allow us to prosper into the future. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Philip, thank you so much for making time out to come talk to us this morning and share your story, um, you know, about where it all began for you. And yes, thank you so much once again. I really appreciate the opportunity to have been here and to be able to share with you. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. That is the RMB Namibia CEO, Mr. Philip Chapman, sharing with us his story. And that's why I say it is sometimes really awesome to wake up early and be here on the ignition to be able to interview and chat with these.